father, mother, child, which is none other than Baal, Tammuz, and Ashtoreth, if you want to take it back to those times. Jupiter is the god who is worshipped under Petros, the rock. And uh, Ubi Petri, where Peter is, there is the church. So here's another rock which takes the place of the true rock. Christianity and the secret societies, we could just summarize it as follows. The old Babylonian religion gave rise to Kabbalism. Via the Essenes and others, Gnosticism came into existence, and Gnosticism was founded by Simon Magus. This comes from no other source than History of Lamagi and uh, by Eliphas Levi. Wow, that's a high Masonic source. So Gnosticism founded by Simon Magus. Then this Gnosticism, with its secret doctrine, was eventually, over time, through many intermediary organizations, carried over to the Knights Templars. And the Knights Templars were a group of a, a Roman Catholic order, if you like, that were set over the temple site to protect it. And they had strong links to Islamic societies, the Ismailis, the Karmatites, the Fatimites, the Druzes, and the Assassins. And these are very, very interesting, and we'll be dealing with them when we talk about the Islamic connection, what the secret societies actually teach. Just like the Templars had two doctrines, one for the Goyim, the uninitiated, and one for the insiders, and the two diametrically opposed to each other, so the secret societies of Islam do exactly the same thing. But that's another lecture. Now the Templars, they had their secret inner information inculcated in the Rosicrucians and the Jesuits. The Jesuits, again, formed and created Freemasonry. And Freemasonry was created as the Protestant arm of the Roman Catholic Church. Unbeknown to them, beguiled, fooled, if you like, into doing the work that Rome wanted them to do, so that Rome could sit in the background while Freemasonry did it for them. And then it wasn't them, it was them. And it was mainly Protestants that were doing it, and not Rome. Very clever. Very, very clever indeed. So now let's have a look at these Knights Templars. Here are some of the presentations, representations. This is Demaloy, uh, the founder of the, or not the founder, but uh, the leader at the time of its uh, dissolution of the Knights Templars. This is what their dress looked like, if you like. And that is one of their symbols. It is a symbol that is used by many churches today. Did you know that? Very charismatic churches use that symbol. That's fascinating. And uh, Jehovah's Witnesses use that symbol as well. We'll come to that in another lecture. Now let's have a look at what Nesta Webster, Secret Societies and Subversive Movements, has to say about the Templars. We're not going to read it all, but uh, you can always, if you get the video, stop the quote. In the year 1118, 19 years after the First Crusade ended with the defeat of the Muslims, the capture of Antioch and Jerusalem, these groups were founded that were eventually established as the Templars, and they presented them with a house near the site of the Temple of Solomon, hence their name, Knights Templars. And they became very famous and a very powerful order which controlled all the finances, the financial world. They were the banking elite of the world, if you like. And then in the, in the year 1128, the order was sanctioned by the Council of Troyes and by the Pope. It was a Roman Catholic order within the church. Now, some years later, October 13, 1307, this order was officially brought to an end by the King of France because it had come to light what they were doing, so it was said. The King of France, Philippe le Bel, had the Templars arrested and the date was Friday the 13th, October 1307, and since that day, Friday the 13th is a day of bad luck. 
for the entire world. And the charges brought against them were, the ceremony of initiation into the order was accomplished by insults to the cross and the denial of Christ and gross obscenities. Gross obscenities. There were all kinds of things reminiscent of Sodom that had to take place there. The adoration of an idol, which was said to be the image of the true God, and that was Baphomet, the symbol over here, of the androgenic male-female deity. The omission of the words of the consecration of the Mass, the right that to lay chiefs amongst themselves, giving absolution, and authorization of unnatural vice. So they had to, to curse the cross, trample upon Jesus, swear allegiance to Baphomet, and sanction this with unusual vice. It's a pretty serious crime in those days, so he was sentenced to death. But the order actually didn't disappear. The Pope was very reluctant to say that it was so. Masonic ritual includes references to the Knights Templars. For example here, Secret Societies and Subnervous Movements says, Several knights who had set forth the rescue of the holy places of Palestine from the Saracens formed an association under the name of Freemasons, thus indicating that their principal desire was the re reconstruction of the Temple of Solomon. And you hear a lot about the reconstruction of the Temple of Solomon today, and the story of Israel and all those interesting things. Now let's go a little bit into some of the history. I'm taking you to this beautiful palace. Where do you think it is? It's in Jerusalem. And it's Notre Dame Vatican. And this is where the Pope has his representation in Jerusalem. It's a palace for a king. There's the Vatican flag flying outside. And uh, there's even a whole lane where you have some interesting papal artifacts. Now in Jerusalem, I went to look up the site of the knights. And here is the Knights Palace, the Latin Patriarch. This is where the Knights Templars originally had a site, and the knights of the papacy now control this area. This is their symbol that they use. That is also the knight's shield, which is used by many religions today. The Rema Church uses that symbol, for example. These are uh, the eternal warriors. That is the symbol that they use. There they are being, they kiss the pope or the patriarch's uh, ring, they are knighted just like knights, and they knight highly prominent bankers and individuals such as that. Inside this church, you have, of course, the statue of Jupiter as Peter. Notice that the foot is well kissed. And uh, I, I didn't want to kiss the foot, so I just stood there. And it is a very important church because both Pope Paul VI and Pope John Paul II visited this church, which is, of course, highly symbolic, and there are the plaques and uh, the Latin Patriarch, the Knight's Palace. If you go inside, there's this interesting altar, and as you look at the altar, you'll see certain figures over here. This one over here is very interesting. Let me get a little bit closer, and what do you see? You see the double-headed eagle, which is also the symbol that is used in Freemasonry. So there it is on the altar of the knights. And what is there on this side? Two swords held like a compass. Fascinating. So there are many, many Masonic fig figures in here. Uh, the tail feathers and the feathers of the eagle, very reminiscent of what you have, for example, on the back of the dollar and all those other interesting symbols of the circle with the triangle and the sun around it. And... Uh, the inheritor of the Templar uh, nuance are the Jesuits. Now the Jesuits, of course, are the ones who behind the scenes control many things. They were founded on the 15th of August, 1534, by Ignatius Loyola and were sanctioned by the Pope on the 27th of September, 1540. So they were created, as it were, to stand against the Reformation. They were designed to destroy the Reformation. Loyola wanted the order to be champions of Catholic unity, and, uh, of course, submission to Christ's vicar, the Pope, was absolutely essential. 
Here you have the institution of Loyola's organization by the Pope uh, 